Hello there everyone and welcome back to another video on the grind. Rust is a great survival game. Trying to win the game against all odds gives players many different surges of excitement. The game has been blowing up recently and many players are beginning the game with their friends on different servers. Here's how you can make your private server on Rust, the complete know-how guide. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon too so that you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. Alrighty now, let's begin. So Rust's full access version was released three years ago in 2018. But recently, the game servers have been blowing up. Players and streamers are fed up of playing the handful of titles all day long. Therefore, the gaming community is looking for alternatives to entertain themselves, and streamers are searching for a new title that could revive or boost their channel. Last year, when the pandemic was in full force, Rust began to turn heads. Slowly but surely, Rust attracted many streamers, and now there are thousands of players on the servers all the time. The game is based on surviving to be the last player on the server. It's a lot like a Royale-style game. There are limited resources on the map, and a player has to find or steal them from another player. Although the game is strictly multiplayer, non-playable characters might distract players by ramming their vehicles into them or by engaging them in a fight. Players also have to keep track of their character's health activities, such as the hunger and thirst bars, and these have to be replenished to avoid dying. The game also features weapons of different sorts, and players can find firearms to eliminate enemies with, and bullets, or they could use old weapons like bows and shovels to take down opponents silently. Servers on Rust are managed by Steam, therefore a player has no involvement in selecting the server, and players are usually dropped on servers that have lesser ping and closest from their location for maximum connectivity. High ping servers are usually located far away, even on different continents, so a player might experience heavy lagging if they're connected to a server in a different, well, country. Playing with friends is a great way to have fun in online games. Friends often partner up and become a serious competition for other players. One can even befriend somebody they don't know, and therefore online gaming has brought the gaming community closer than ever before. But there are times when players do not want other people around. Players often try to battle against each other or on an ordinary server, but keep getting killed by another player. That's why many players try to find empty servers or create a private one where they can have no interference from any opponent. Using this simple method, you can create your own private server in Rust. As Steam controls most of the servers, you'll need Steam to make you one. It is impossible to make a server manually unless you have a deep knowledge of programming, but we're doing a service level coverage here, so we'll ignore that option for now. Fortunately, Steam provides a simple solution for players that want a separate server for different reasons. So for step one, you will need the Steam CMD file to make your server. Steam uses diverse and extensive programming to create and execute their servers. For this purpose, they have a complete program that does all the hard work for them. Fortunately, this application can be downloaded easily from the internet. It is available on Steam's official website and you can download it from other sources as well. For the second step here, once the file is downloaded, open the application. And to avoid confusion between game and server files, it is better to move the application to a new folder for the server. Once in the new folder, Steam CMD will start installing files for the server in the folder. This process could usually take a few minutes after all the files are installed. Log in anonymously to avoid problems. Then type the update command app underscore update and use the current version that the game is running. This command will direct the application to check for updates and validate the files that it downloads. For step 3, which is updating your servers, you'll need a batch file for the server to remain updated all the time. For this, create a new document and add specific commands to it. These commands can easily be found on the internet, then save the document in the service folder and change its extension to an executable batch file. Exit the server console after saving the file's extension. Step 4. For the application to make a Rust server, you will need a start batch file. For this, you need to go to the Steam apps and then the common folder. Here, create a new document and enter some more commands. All of them can be easily found online and the order of commands should be maintained or else the server will not work. You can change some aspects of the commands such as the size of the game's world and the number of players on the server. Save this document as a batch file as well. Finally, for step 5, start the new executable which will load the server up. It will take some time, but after it is done, you can open the game, go to the console and type connect localhost colon 28015 and your game will start connecting to your server. Maintaining a server on Rust is not very complicated. It does require patience and some commands. Anyone can easily make a server to enjoy some time alone with their friends or practice their skills in the world of Rust. But for now, guys, this brings us to the end of our video. I do hope you guys enjoyed it and if you haven't liked the video yet it's never too late so go give it a thumbs up people we'll see you soon in another video but until then take care and goodbye